it's Connie from Faff Designs. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This week I'm going to paint this table here. It already looks painted and that's because it is. It's been my experiment piece for the new Terry Clay paint so I have lost track of how many colours this piece has had on it. It's just been something to play on but I'm going to put it out of its misery and give it a proper makeover. Okay, so I am going to be covering up those really pretty blues that I've been kind of experimenting with because I want to go for a different colour scheme on this piece. Um, these blues, I'll use them on a different project because they are absolutely gorgeous, but I'm going to use a different colour scheme to what I'd normally use and we're going to go for sort of pinks and purples. So as usual, if I'm doing a leggy piece, I'll always do it upside down first, just to make sure you get all the kind of nooks and crannies. And then I'll flip it over and do two coats of this colour on the top. And I'm avoiding saying this name of this colour because it's quite hard to pronounce. Um, and uh, But I'm going to list all the colours below in the description, as I normally do. But it's actually called Bougainvilliers. Now, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. But it's a really gorgeous, rich kind of pink colour. And as you can see, as it's drying, it's getting a lot lighter in tone. That happens with clay paint. And when you add a top coat, you get those colours back. Okay, so the next colour that I'm going to use is called Daffodil. That one's a little bit easier to pronounce, which is a, obviously a beautiful yellow colour. And I'm just adding this in certain areas um, over the piece and then I let it dry down and then added the next colour which is called Malachite which is a really really beautiful deep green. Again just layering it over the top and I'm also just playing around with my mister bottle here and just adding various kind of layers um, just to add like a little bit of depth and dimension to the piece. And I did dry this down with a hairdryer just because I was getting impatient with the layers drying. Um, so you can speed up the drying process uh, with clay paint absolutely fine with a hairdryer. And then my sort of main colour, if you like, that I want to use is called elderberry, which is actually a really pretty purple. Purple is not my usual kind of colour to go for. Um, I'm a pretty much blues and greens kind of girl um, but I um, I wanted to use a different colour scheme and also Jpo from the Purple Posy has been uh, taunting me for a while making me do a purple piece so I thought I'd go with it embrace it and I'm actually applying this with a sponge um, I've decanted some of the paint onto a plate just to make basically the application easier and um, layering it up with a sponge the difference with a sponge application versus a brush, it's going to give you quite a softness and it also gives you variation in the thickness that you apply your paint. So with a sponge application, some areas are going to be thicker than others um, and you can see me kind of just pouncing it on the surface of the piece. Um, I kind of want some areas um, more sort of uh, heavier than others because that's just gonna basically just add a little bit of tonal variation to the piece. And I also want those colors that I layered up underneath to um, be seen when I sort of distress later. And you can see that I'm using the Mr. Bottle just to kind of get the paint to move around uh, on the surface of the table. Um, just be aware with clay paint that when you um, spray water on it, it will reactivate. So um, if you want a sort of layered look, just be careful how much water you're applying onto the surface. Okay, so we'll speed it up a little bit, but you can see all I'm doing is working that sponge over the piece and getting more or less full coverage, but I'm also spritzing areas to get that paint to drip and to reveal the layers underneath. So instead of kind of waiting for it to dry and distressing it, which is, you know, how you'd normally get layers to appear through um, your paint. I'm using a, a mister bottle to just sort of eat away at those colours, eat away at that purple colour 
um, so that you can see the layers underneath. It just gives a really kind of soft, um, weathered finish. So this is just a zoomed in version of what I was just doing. I just thought I'd show you the close up because it shows the colours peeking through underneath um, of the, the table that I'd already done and also it just shows the application of the top. So I'm just again pouncing the sponge with the product on the top of the table um, using the water mister just to move the paint around a little bit so that you can kind of see the colours peeking through underneath. So you get a hit of that little bit of yellow, the pink and the green. So I actually sat this in the sun because it's it's really nice weather here at the moment. So I sat this in the sun to completely dry down. And again, what you'll notice is the colours go a lot lighter when they're fully dry. Um, and all I'm doing now is just repeating the process that I've just done. So I'm applying a little bit more elderberry paint to the sponge, which means I'm just going to build up the coverage of that purple colour. Um, in some areas, I'm not doing it to all areas, I'm just doing it to some areas, just to build up that coverage. So you remember me saying that this paint reactivates itself when you wet it. Um, all I'm doing now is using the Best Dang brush with some water just to kind of smooth out some areas where the sponge had left a little bit texture um, and just kind of smooth it all out basically, that's all I'm doing. But all I'm doing is, is spritz spritzing the surface and using my Best Dang brush in kind of swirly motions just to, like I say, soften up any kind of edges um, or any bits of texture that the sponge had left behind. So I, again, I waited for all that to dry down and then I took a fine sanding sponge and just started to distress a little bit. This, this paint distresses very well and very easily. Um, you don't need a heavy hand at all to reveal what's underneath and definitely don't use an electric sander because um, that would probably just take the paint straight off. Um, but it is really, really easy to distress this paint back and get hints of those colours peeking through underneath. And the really nice thing is, um, you remember the really beautiful vivid blue that I started out with? Hints of that are coming through as well, so I kind of embraced that and went with it. Then the next thing that I did is I got my Big Daddy brush. This is also going to be released with Terra Paint. It's a natural bristle brush and it's brilliant for speed painting. And all I did is mixed in a tray some Wisteria Mist, which is a pale kind of dusky lilac colour. And I added some water to it. And then I'm going to use that as a wash all over the piece. So you just have to make sure you be careful with your application because again, too much water can reactivate the layers underneath. So I'm using this brush so that I apply kind of minimal amount of brush strokes over the piece. And then all I'm gonna do is really lightly wipe it back and use some water. You can see how concentrated and pigmented the paint is, even watered down. So I'm using a little bit of water just to remove the excess paint off the surface. And that's just gonna give it a wash all over and kind of tie in all of those layers and also give it a little bit more of a muted tone. Again, you can see I'm working in really small areas because this paint does dry super quick. And as always with a wash, you don't want that to dry down before you can wipe back the excess. So I'm just working in really, really small areas and not giving that paint chance to dry.
And next step, I added some silk screen stencil detail. So I'm cutting up part of the silk screen stencil. Um, this is in the pattern Delicate Lace, and I'm just using half of it to kind of, you can just see it there, hold it up to the camera, there we go. Um, you can just see half of it there, and I'm just gonna use it on the sides and round the back of the piece, um, and I'm gonna basically just level it up with the lip underneath um, of the little table, and just stencil in black, just to give a kind of bohemian kind of look to this. Um, so I'm using the colour Onyx, which is a black in the terra clay paint. I'm using a small stencil brush because these are quite intricate designs. These are just um, a set that I got off Amazon. Um, and I'm just swirling the paint into the silkscreen stencils. Now, I didn't know how this was going to turn out because I haven't used terra paint with a silkscreen stencil or any stencil actually. So I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. It could have gone one of two ways, um, but it actually works fabulously with the silk screen stencils. So you can see I've just done one section and then I'm applying it on the next section just to get a continuation of that pattern. And what I like about silk screen stencils is they're super detailed. Uh, you can't get that amount of detail with a standard stencil um, just because you'd get too much bleed through. But these are obviously self-adhesive, so you can get a really nice crisp line. And it also, it almost looks a little bit like a furniture stamp, um, which I absolutely love that look. And it looks really pretty and delicate and a little bit bohemian. And then for the front section, that piece of stencil that I was just using wouldn't have looked right across the front of the drawer. So I'm using another part of the stencil um, out of the same pack. And oh, I'm just, if you can see me jigging around and bobbing around, I'm actually dancing. And I'm not ashamed to say I was dancing to Dolly Parton. Um, I was having a right old boogie in my workshop. <laughs> And then I realised I was on camera and I thought, I'm going to have to explain why I'm moving around like that. Um, but that was me dancing. Um, so again, I'm just using a really small stencil brush and just putting that detail on the front of the drawer just to kind of tie in with the look because I thought if I left it blank, it might look a bit odd. So there we go. That's the front of the drawer detail done. And just to be in keeping with the piece, I have knocked that stencil back a little bit. So I've used the same sanding pad and just distressed it slightly, just so that it's not quite so crisp. Um, because obviously the piece, the kind of look that we're going for is, you know, like a layered kind of bohemian look. So I'm just um, distressing the stencil back to, to kind of go with the vibe of the piece. Okay, almost finished, and I don't think I'm doing any more dancing, um, but I might do. Uh, so I may have mentioned this before, I've definitely mentioned it in my other video with Terra Paint, but you have to seal your Terra Paint. Um, it's obviously remains porous until you seal it, and you all know that I'm a wax girl. I absolutely love finishing painted furniture with waxes. However, I don't have the wax yet. Um, so I don't have the Terra Wax yet and it's very different to Bestang Wax. So Bestang Wax is water-based and I use that quite a lot in my projects that I use with chalk mineral paint. Terra Wax is going to be an oil-based wax and I have had a sample of it and it is very lovely but I just don't have enough to finish this piece. So I am using clear coat in flat. And that is also works, it works fine um, with the paint and you can see the colors just getting back their vibrancy and how it looks when it's wet basically. Um, and like I say, clear coat works absolutely fine. It seals the paint and obviously locks in all of those layers and adds protection. Um, but the wax is absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait to get it. I'm applying the clear coat flat with a Dixie Belle synthetic brush just for a nice smooth finish. 
and the sheen level is comparable to that of a wax so it's very similar like a low sheen level um, and I did two coats in total of this just to make sure I covered all the areas and to give it a nice um, even coat. So I left the clear coat to dry for a couple of hours and went back to attach the original handle and then would it even really be bohemian and, and that kind of look if I didn't use a little bit of gold? So I got my gilding wax in gold and just applied a really light dusting around the edges of the drawers. Drawers? There's only one. Just the edge of the drawer around the corners and highlighted some of the edges as well. And here's a little tip for you. If you go in a little bit heavy with your gilding wax, like I have done, clearly got a little bit carried away, just grab some Big Mama's butter or hemp oil, anything oil-based, and get a little bit on a cloth or a rag and that will remove your gilding wax obviously we've sealed this piece with clear coat so it's locked in the paint and those layers so there's no um, issue with that kind of being disturbed so just really lightly rub over the gilding wax the sooner you do this the easier it is to come off because gilding wax dries permanent and is pretty bulletproof and there you go, you just remove anything that you might have gone a little bit too carried away on. And I also use the same silk screen stencil that I used around the sides of the piece just to add a little bit of interest on the drawer sides because there was quite a lot of clearance um, in the drawer side when it was sort of in the runner if you like. I'd only recommend doing this if you do have a little gap, otherwise you can cause issues with the drawers running. Um, so I'm, again, I'm just using the colour Onyx, which is the black, and just applying the same detail to the drawer size just to get a bit of interest. And again, sealing it with clear coat flat, just to make sure that if it does get knocked or scraped, it's not gonna budge. And here's a couple of close-ups just to show you all of those different layers of colour and stencil detail and that little hint of gold gilding wax and there's the finished stage piece. So there we go, it's all finished and I've staged it with some flowers out of the garden. Hopefully you can see all the layers in the close-ups and it was it was so much fun to do. Um, I can't wait for you all to try terra clay paint. It really is a lot of fun and a lot easier than what I thought it was going to be as well. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also ring that little notification bell because the algorithms change all the time and that means you'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching.